Conquest, The Last Argument of Kings is a fantasy genre tabletop war game by Parabellum Games. In this video you will be shown the basics of how to play and by the end you will have understood most of the fundamental ideas and you'll be ready to take command of a powerful faction of your own. To get started you'll need a copy of the rules which are conveniently printed in books but there is also an entirely free app which you can bookmark on your favorite web browser and install on your cell phone. This can be used to build and save your army lists as well as to look up the rules of any of the game's currently playable factions. This is a game that uses a lot of six-sided dice so get yourself plenty of those as well as your tape measure, your collection of beautiful and incredibly detailed miniatures and of course you'll need to get yourself an opponent. Hey, king for some conquest? Last argument of kings, right? I'm, Pretty cool. I'm, I'm reading. Can't you see I'm in the middle of my book? I want to play! Oh my god! Fine! But I'm going to crush you and your stupid orcs and your stupid dinosaurs. To create an army list, go to the army builder app and select prepare for war. Then choose your faction, give your list a name, then click on the plus warband button. A warband is a group of regiments led by a character. Let's select the Noble Lord for our example. He is Lord Edwin Ponsonby Beckett Spiffington, first of his name, commander of the armies of Brandon Grant. My lord, the Wadroon have proved hastier than we anticipated. They could be arriving at the outskirts of Brandon Grad within days, and that's if we're lucky. Don't pretend I'm oblivious to that. Let them burn down a few villages on their way. Peasants will remember that I alone have the authority to raise the banners or abandon the city to its doom. It's about time to show them why this is my land. Now that we've accounted for his background story, we can click on the Add Regiments button and assign up to four regiments to him. Only some of this faction's regiments are available to a noble lord and they're categorized into mainstay and restricted groups. Lord Edwin can choose up to four regiments from the mainstay category, but may take only one restricted regiment for each mainstay selection he's made. This allows for several combinations, where he could have one to four mainstay regiments, or one to three mainstays and one restricted regiment, or he could have two mainstays and two restricted regiments, for example. To defend his lands against the imminent arrival of the Wadroon threat, our noble lord Edwin shall choose one regiment of his finest men-at-arms, one regiment of mercenary crossbowmen, and then, with these two mainstays selected, he has unlocked the potential to include up to two restricted regiments, and so he'll call upon his most trusted squires and his glorious and valiant household knights. With this warband complete, we can add upgrades such as items for the noble lord himself, or enhancements for the regiments in his warband and then we'll move on to create other warbands until the total points we've spent on this army list reaches the agreed value for our upcoming battle. In this case, we're using the tournament standard for Conquest The Last Argument of Kings, 2,000 points. Your warband is assembled, my lord. Very well. You may inform the Imperial Officer, the Priory Commander, and that insufferable faced priest that we're prepared to march. I want a regiment of light cavalry to scout ahead and return with a full report on the enemy position. Conquest miniatures come with circular bases so that they can be used in another version of the game called First Blood, which is a skirmish-style game and more suitable for players wishing to use a small smaller number of miniatures. In this video we're learning how to play Parabellum's main game which is called Conquest The Last Argument of Kings which is a rank and flank style tabletop war game involving regiments of troops so when you're assembling your miniatures out of the box you'll see that they come with square bases that we call stands and this means that a stand is the basic type of unit that the rules refer to rather than the individual models that you place onto a stand for cosmetic purposes. There are four different types of stands infantry, brutes, cavalry and monsters. Every character and regiment in your army list will come with a card that will have been included with the miniatures you purchased and unboxed. All cards belong in one of three categories, light, medium and heavy. This partly determines how quickly your regiments are likely to arrive onto the battlefield, as deployment and conquest occurs over a series of turns. As of the game's first turn, only light regiments can arrive and only if you roll a four or less on a six sided die for that particular light regiment. The rules include a description of how you can bring on your medium and heavy regiments in later turns and what dice rolls are required depending on which turn it is. Every turn you can always choose one of your potentially available regiments to arrive automatically rather than rolling for it or you can instead choose one regiment not to come on if you'd rather keep it in reserve instead of leaving that up to chance. Once you've determined which regiments will be in play at the start of the turn, take the cards for each of them and order them into a deck, with the top card activating first and each player taking turns to activate a card until they've all been used. 
All right, so what light regiments have you got? Oh, you know, just the one. I've just got the Raptor Riders, but look at how cute they are. And look at how buff my muscle mommies are and the pretty little tail. Aren't they cute? Do you love them? They're my babies. I'll pick the squires to come on automatically and roll for the rest. I need four or less. Damn. I wanted all of them, there's only two. Just chill, you can bring them on next turn. At the start of every turn, we need to roll for Supremacy. That's gonna determine who plays the first card. We both roll a d6 and the lowest wins. Yeah, except I've got fewer cards than you. So that means I can change the result of my roll up or down by one. Ready? Supremacy! cards already? Yeah, played them all. That's the end of turn one. Mm, do we secure any points? No, because we haven't captured any objective zones and the light regiments can't score anyway. Follow the link in the video description to download not only the core rules for Conquest, but also the Tournament Scenario Pack PDF. Here you can see the rules for how games of Conquest are won and lost, and how to score objective points. Our tutorial today is using Scenario 10, called Head to Head. There are three areas of the battlefield that the players must control, and points are awarded at the end of each of the game's ten rounds. To control an objective zone, a player must have more medium and heavy stands occupying the zone than the opposing player. In our battle so far, none Neither the 100 Kingdoms nor the Wadroon have yet deployed any medium or heavy regiments, so the score remains tied at zero as we proceed to the second turn. Okay, so turn two, medium units and come on. I've got my veterans and my freaking awesome chief warlord. Obviously I'll pick them to show up automatically. Then I'll be rolling for two units of blooded, these guys, including the one with the queen, and the warbred, and the chosen of conquest. Characters are assigned to regiments before they appear on the battlefield, and so the chieftain will arrive escorted by his impressive and powerful veterans, which the Wadroon elected to deploy automatically, without rolling for them this round. With the Raptor Riders already on the field, dice are rolled to determine which other medium regiments are available, granting the Wadroon two additional successes in this case, which they use to bring in one regiment of blooded, and also their war bread. Okay, for me, I'm still rolling for the light unit that didn't come on last time, which is the militia. And I've got two medium units, one of which is the men at arms with the noble lord. So I'll choose them as my automatic pick this round, and the other one is the household knights. So I'll roll for them plus the militia. The 100 kingdoms already committed their squires, crossbowmen and rangers with the imperial officer attached in the first turn, and will now roll for any new regiments that are eligible to be deployed in the second turn. The men-at-arms escorting Lord Edwin are selected for automatic deployment, while the militia with Theist Priest are picked up following a successful roll, and the household knights stay in reserve along with other reinforcements because of a failed dice roll. Ready? Supremacy! Yes! Okay, I'll draw my first card, which is the mercenary crossbowmen. They get to do two actions. The first is to march, and they can go a maximum of five, so I'll move them up. Then for their second action, they'll do a volley, targeting your stupid Raptor Riders over there. When you play a regiment's card, it can perform two actions, each chosen from a list of possible actions depending on whether they are in combat, meaning base contact with an enemy regiment, or whether they are out of combat. In this case, the crossbowmen are out of combat, so they can march, allowing them to move up to five inches, as determined by the march characteristic on their profile. The rules also describe the various ways that they can move in different directions, change their facing, and they can also choose a reform action instead of marching if they want to change the shape of their regiment. Marching uses one of their two actions, so the second action could be used to march and move again, but in this case they'll choose a volley action, as they are equipped with crossbows, which are ranged weapons, and this will allow them to attack the raptor riders from afar. Each stand has barrage three, and there's three stands, so that's nine shots. 
but the leader Sam gets plus one, so I'll be rolling ten shots altogether. They have a volley stat of two, so any dice rolls two or less will hit. I could have got plus one to that from aiming, but I chose to move with my first action, so I won't get that this time. Rolling low numbers in conquest is good, because you're typically looking to get a result that is equal to or lower than a target number when you roll. The crossbowmen unleash a deadly volley of shots, which will score a hit on their target for every result equal to or less than their volley stat. You've scored six hits out of the ten rolls you made, which is ridiculous, because I was expecting like three or four. Now I'll make six defense rolls, needing two or less for each of them. Yeah, but the crossbows have armor piercing, so you'll go down to needing one. Oh, but I could use the raptor rider's evasion stat to make the saves instead, since it's not affected by armor piercing, so I can still save on two. Any failed defense rolls will inflict wounds on the target regiment, which are allocated to one stand at a time. And whenever a regiment takes damage equivalent to its wounds stat, one of its stands will be removed from play. I'm playing my raptor riders next, and for their first action, they're gonna move up their full march distance of eight, just like this. But Then because they're really angry about getting shot, they're gonna charge your mercenaries and eat them. Nom 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 nom. Um, no, you can't actually do that. Because when you attack, you need to make a clash action. And you've already used both your actions. Because you moved and then charged. That's all they can do this turn. You can clash next turn if you want. A regiment may only perform two actions per turn, so make them count. The most common pairs of actions in Conquest are march and then march again to quickly take up a better position in the field. March and then charge. This means a regiment can't attack until next turn, so be careful about charging an enemy regiment that hasn't attacked yet this turn. Charge and then clash. The best way to destroy your enemies before they do the same to you. Inspire and then clash. Inspire is an in-combat action that makes your attacks more accurate so if you start the turn locked in combat with an enemy regiment, make sure to hit them hard. March and then volley. You may need to march first to ensure that your volley action is in range of the target. Aim and then volley. If you don't need to reposition your regiment, aiming will make their shots more accurate. There are many more combinations of actions to discover, and a creative decision at the right time can make all the difference in this highly strategic and tactical Forward way. March. Round three, we're allowed to roll to see if our heavy units show up. And since I can pick one of them to succeed automatically, I'm going straight for my gorgeous T Rex. I've actually got heaps of heavy units to roll for, but my auto pick is going to be these brutal Knights of the Crimson Tower. And of course, the Priory Commander himself will be leading them. By the third turn, most if not all of your army is ready to deploy, so you may find yourself with a large stack of cards. The order of your deck becomes even more important as we head into the mid-game, and you will decide on this order secretly, allowing both players to think of a cunning game plan to outwit each other in the upcoming round. Nobody knows who will win the supremacy roll to determine which player draws the first card at this point, so be careful with the order of your ready? deck. I choose the Raptor Riders to go first. They're gonna use their first action to inspire! Their clash statistic is two. So when I roll my dice, I'll need twos or less. Then by making them inspired, I get plus one, taking me up to threes or less. Conquest is decided in combat. Let's look at a breakdown of how a typical close encounter is resolved. Your regiment will use its first action to charge and therefore make contact with an enemy regiment so that it can use in combat actions. Or if it's already in combat, it may use its first action to inspire. Two stands are left alive, so with five attacks, I'll get to roll 10 dice. One of them is the leader, so I'll get plus one for that. So 11 in total and the Huntress upgrade gives them a special roll called Flurry, which means I can reroll any missed attacks. 
Next, you can clash, allowing you to roll a number of dice equivalent to the attack's statistic on your regiment's profile, multiplied by the number of stands that you have in contact with the enemy, plus one attack if the regiment has a leader. For every stand in your regiment not in base contact with an enemy stand, you add one further supporting attack. Any dice rolls that are equal to or lower than your regiment's clash statistic will hit, bearing in mind that you can raise your clash by one if you have inspired with your previous action this turn. If you charged, you will gain inspired automatically. For every hit you have scored, your opponent will have to make a defense roll, using either the defense or evasion stat of their regiment as we saw earlier. Next, your opponent will have to check to see if the resolve of their troops will hold, or whether it will result in further casualties. Not all damage causes resolve checks, as we saw earlier. The damage from shooting did not lead to the step, but in close combat a successful strike can crush your enemies both physically and mentally. They will roll dice equivalent to the number of failed defense rolls that they recently made, but this time they are looking to roll equal to or below their resolve stat. Any failed rolls will cause even more wounds as your opponent's regiment is shamefully routed. <laughs> For the hundred kingdoms. heavy infantry, so. How heavy are we talking? Ready? Supremacy! Yes, finally.
got damned reinforcements. for watching our video. Now that you know the basics of how Conquest works, get yourself a Wii Army and let's play! If you're interested in learning more of the rules about the game, like and subscribe to our channel and we can show you some more cool videos. Yeah, and if you want to see more of me and Crystal, there's a whole comedy series called Table Game Fun Times on YouTube. So check that out. You can click the link right above her head. <laughs>